Amber. Hello. Hello. Happy Friday. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Happy Friday. Yeah, I'm a little tired. I'm a little hungry, but I'm happy to be talking to you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm excited. Thank you for making some time for me today. Oh, of course. That. Likewise. I mean, got to get right to it. Big congratulations on a, I mean, an amazing win, amazing finish. I'm sure a great Thank first you. experience in the PFL. I mean, how does it feel being the leader right now? You're uh, the queen of the leaderboard. Uh, it, it, uh, I know, like, everyone wants, like, this crazy, like, response, but, like, honestly, <laughs> I feel like I just, like, want to get back to work, you know? Like, I just, like, I'm so excited to have momentum for the first time in a really long time, but it does feel amazing. Like, I'm trying not to, like, you know, like, oh, I'm the top of the leaderboard, but, like, <laughs> it does feel really cool, especially because... Um, I, I was like the underdog of the season pretty much, you know, well, I'm pretty sure I still will be the underdog of the season, but, um, yeah, it feels good to show people like, this is who I am. Like, don't sleep on me, you know? Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Of course. Of course. I mean, where did these sick dance moves come from? You were really feeling it right after. <laughs> <laughs> I know everyone's like, oh, that's so cringy. I guess it's just where I'm from. Like, if you're from the Bay Area or know anything about Bay Area, like, spicy culture, which is kind of like what I grew up in, you know? So it's just kind of like, that's just what we do, you know? And especially at my gym, like, I dance around all the time. Coach Kirian dances around all the time. Like, you know, it's just, it's just kind of how you find your vibe. Like, even before I went out to the fight, they were playing this song. And in my head, I was like, oh, they fucked up because now I'm going to catch my groove. Like, I'm going <laughs> to catch my rhythm. Like, it was, you know. Um, but, yeah, I think it's just a little bit of who I am, like, where I'm from that, like, just gets me, like, excited. And and for me, like, people are like, oh, she does. Like, I was like of course, you, like, see the, the one shitty comment right. out of, like, 100. But they're like, she doesn't have a record to be celebrating like that. And, da, 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 da. and it's like, if people really knew what it took for me to get to that moment, like they would be celebrating with me, yeah. you know? And like, and every time I hit a new moment, it's like it's even something more for, of a bigger accomplishment for me. So, yeah. Yeah. I, more of that. Absolutely. Like, either tears or dancing. <laughs> like, that's what you get. You can see either me crying or dancing for sure. <laughs> Got to let the emotions out in one way or another, right? So, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, speaking of finding the flow, like I've watched the fight a couple of times now and you can kind of see that you were trying to land the head kick a couple, a couple of times before finally finding it. So I'm curious, like, did you know that was kind of the move you were going to win with? I mean, no, I, I did not. Like, honestly, we had a completely different game, game plan. Um, I haven't, like, I've been kind of on, like, a lot of lay layoffs, you mm -hmm. know? So I haven't fought in a year before that. It had been, like, a year, two years, uh, or, like, eight months before that. It was, like, two years in COVID. So when the fight first started, like, I was having a hard time finding my range. I was like, oh, shit. And then I ran, I lunged in, and I caught a couple, and I was like, oh, fuck. You're not, so, oh, sorry. For like, no, you're good. I'm like, oh, man, you're not supposed to do that. Like, that's the number one thing coach tells you not to do. Leave with your face. <laughs> um, but it kind of woke me up a little bit. And honestly, I was trying to find my end to wrestle. You know, I was really excited to have an opponent for the first time where I can engage the wrestling because most of the time, you know, it's the opposite. So I was like, everything was was for that. Like, I'm going to show my MMA. Like, I'm going to show it all in this fight. Like, three-round war. Like, this is all the things mentally, like, I was ready for, you know. Um, and then my coach seen it He's, we you know we have a specific like pin the arm you know kill mm -hmm. the right hand and uh it's a little higher than like a body kick you know so when i hit it once she dropped her hands and and when she went to go like block it again and drop her hands it just she just gave me the the opening because it because the kick's not going to stop it's right. going to keep going in that one one angle so and uh, we also teach that too, you know, like that specific angle. Like some people teach like a roundhouse kick where it comes around, but ours comes like straight up. So mm -hmm. it's just going to keep going until it hits something. <laughs> but it was, it was nice. I yeah. thought it was going to hurt. I thought my foot would hurt after that, but didn't there you go perfect then <laughs> especially with the format of everything but yeah i mean it the, i think it makes the win even better because like she's arguably you know one of the best strikers in the, the the tournament because of her background and whatnot so i mean i'm sure that makes you feel a lot better about being able to f finish with strikes you know like you said oh, the yeah. wrestling game plan 
probably smart just in theory because of her own striking. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it, and it, and it feels good to like, like let people know too. Like I like, I can finish it like everywhere. Cause my fight before this, I finished with the sub and then now this one, like I'm getting another, like, you know, I got another KO. So it, it's good. I think it really does kind of put my, you know, like obviously people seen me all week PFL. Like I'm like one of those kind of fighters that's in a great mood. Like I'm smiling at everyone. Even people in the fight, I'm like, hey, like, you know, what's <laughs> up? Like, like that's just how I am, you know. But when it comes time for like game time, like, you know, there's a there's a switch that switches. So it's good to know that um that switch is still there and it's still switching and, and the kill button is on. So yeah, it felt good. It just it felt really, really good. And I, I feel really, really good, but I just don't ever want to be complacent. Right. Cause there's so much more and every girl in this tournament is needs to be respected like for their own craft and how long and they all these girls have been fighting nonstop for the last year, two years. You know, I really am the dark horse here. So that means I have to work extra hard. Yeah, off to a great start, though. And, you know, I'm curious, like, Amber, when you look at your record, only one decision in your career. So I'm cur just curious, like, you take pride in being a killer, be killed fighter, because it's always exciting and fun with you. Yeah, like, I want to do that. You know, I want people to tune in. And, and um, I think that's why I took some of my losses so hard. It wasn't the fact that I lost. It was just the fact that, like, I didn't perform because that's what I want to pride myself on. It's like, you know, you're going to get something. Something's going to happen. Um, and it's going to be exciting no matter who it is, where it goes. Like, I, I say, and I know, like, I'm a full, well-rounded fighter. So I know I can get the kill, like, wherever. And I've spent a long, like, the last couple years, like, finding it again. Like, honing back into just whether it's the sub, whether it's the, the you know, touch and face. Like, whatever it is. Like, really trying to find, like, the kill switch. And, Yeah. It's nice. It's nice when hard work pays off. Oh, of course. <laughs> Quite a feeling. And, you know, you have three sub 40 second knockouts, which I'm sure felt pretty great, too. But like, where do you kind of rank, I guess, this one with those? If I mean, if you would have said one of those are like your favorites so far, but which one felt best, I guess? This one's definitely up there with my Marina Shafir knockout of my pro career um, when I, you know, went pro in Vegas, actually, only because, you know, like, just put some respect on my name, you know, she's like, oh, I'm the most perfect striker. Like, she's going to have to wrestle me, right. you know, like, put some respect on my name, dude. Like, like, I can do it all. Like, I like, don't think that I'm going to be forced to do one thing because, like, I'm always going to come in there and do my game plan first. And then whatever happens, like, happens, you know, but don't don't think that, like, I'm some slouch and just because you got – all these knockouts or world titles or whatever mm -hmm. like i'm there there's no fear here like i go in there with the best of them and do whatever it is i have to do to get my hand raised yeah for sure and i mean yeah prove that every single time out and where where did the uh where's the touch em up nickname come from what's the story behind this i've never heard it <laughs> Um, I, well, my coach, my coach, uh, coach Kieran Fitzgibbons, he, uh, he was trying to name me some ridiculous name. He was trying to name me like, <laughs> of course, what was it? He was trying to call me Katie Perry of MMA. Cause everyone says I look like Katie Perry. And I was like, no, like that's not sticking <laughs> here, you know? Um, very intimidating. And, then, <laughs> and so I'm like, dude, you're going to have to go back to the drawing board on that one. And so the touch him up thing just kind of started in training. And then after the Janae fight where, you know, I, I was able to like strike all three rounds, like, you know, and, um, you know, he was just coach always tell me like, you just got to touch him up. You just got to touch him up. You just got to touch him up. So it just kind of stuck, you know, my, uh, my El Nino, teammates and coaches they call me amber alert which oh I that's really a good how. one i kind of like that know how I, <laughs> they love it coach gilbert melendez loves it loves it yeah, he wants that's me pretty to good come out, like, he wants me to come out to a siren yes amber i like this <laughs> um but yeah i like to touch him up it does it has seemed to stick and yeah, I do like it because I do prefer to, you know, box and like just to strike, you know, but yeah, it's just one that's thick. much better than Katy Perry of MMA. Yeah, that, that one's know. a little bit. <laughs> this cannot, this cannot, what you're leaving me with here. Uh, no. love, love Coach Kieran, but I would have to talk to him about that one, so. <laughs> yeah, thank you. No, and then at, at the fight on um, the 7th, on last Friday, this guy comes in to the back, I forget his name, but he's working with production. He goes, hey. 
has anyone ever told you you look like Katy Perry? <laughs> and I was like, get out. <laughs> He's drunk. Get out. <laughs> and oh Coach was just looking at me like, see, I told you. Right. He's like, I'm not crazy. You're like, well. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think touch much, much more fitting. Yes. Yeah. I could agree with that too. <laughs> so. Man, Amber, I mean, it's been quite a journey, though, that you have had so far, like some great experiences getting to compete in promotions like Invicta and and Bellator and now PFL, obviously. But I'm curious, like, obviously, you're in the middle of it as well. But do you feel like the timing of things is kind of all happening at the right timing and perfectly working out for you to have this opportunity with something like the PFL and such a great reward at the end of the tunnel, you know? Absolutely. I think I think timing is everything. And it's never about my timing, like God's timing is really the only timing that matters. And I think that everything that has happened up to this point was supposed to happen. Bellator was supposed to happen the way it happened. And Victor was supposed to happen the way it happened. And like, now we're here at the PFL. And um, I just feels like home. And I hope that PFL feels the same way with me as well, you know, working with the staff and Ray Seppo and like, they're just all so amazing, but I couldn't help but just sit there and feel like, wow, this is home. Like this is home. This is not just home for me. This is home for 45ers. These are, this is home for so many women who have not been getting the same opportunity, you know? So yeah, yeah, it was, it was a really nice experience and I can't help but just feel like it's, you know, not that things don't come without hiccups or trials, tribulations, yeah. like all that stuff, but it does seem to be flowing really well for me right now. And yeah, it didn't, I hope it looks easy because it definitely hasn't come without a lot of sacrifice, pain, tears, blood, and all that. Like I've been a pro for almost nine years or like nine years mm-hmm. now. So definitely been a long time. Was it weird seeing Megan again? A little bit. So I see her at I see her at my last fight, and that was kind of the first time we had like talked, talked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's a little weird because I don't know if she fully knows that like the impact that fight had on me, not even in a negative manner. But that mm-hmm. was kind of where the switch of things happened for me, where I was like, I need to find a new gym. I need to start, you know, taking my career seriously. Like I need to, you know, all, all these things that need to happen. And if it wasn't for that fight with her at that time, like I probably would have took me a lot longer to realize and like, you know, switch up what I was doing Mm -hmm. and kind of take my career a little bit more seriously. So you would say that was probably your biggest learning experience in your career so far then getting that fight with her. Well, that, well, that and Bellator. So, like, yeah. that fight, like, I legitimately lost that fight because I didn't have the skills. Like, legitimately lost the Megan Anderson fight because I had nothing for her. I did not know what to do. I was not trained properly for that fight. Um, but then Bellator is impactful in, like, a more of an emotional way mm-hmm. because there was those fights that, like, besides Arlene, like, because we were, you know, it was all three rounds, but my other two losses there were there's purely me just not mentally being able to, like, pull through and just being, like, fuck, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, you know, I had quit in the locker room before I ever quit in the cage. So I think that those combined it, like, really were, like, okay, you know, what are we going to do now? Um, especially after the Bellator run. I mean, I lost six times in a year, everything I did, Muay Thai, MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, all of it, I just lost, you know? So it was like, okay, what, what now? Like now I need to, you know, really like fix them. Do I love this? Do I not? Whatever, whatever. And like find my heart in, in fighting again. Um, Cause it's really hard to do after so many losses. Yeah. But uh yeah, like the Megan fight definitely helped change the trajectory of my career and where I was going for sure. Yeah. And, you know, now on this great winning streak. And I'm curious, like, would you say it's kind of been an accumulation of things to lead to like being the key to success for the winning streak? Or is it, can you pinpoint one thing or was it kind of, you know, all these experiences just adding up probably? I think it's kind of just all the experiences adding up and like really just figuring out like, like it's not physical, it's mental, it's emotional for me. Like every fighter is different, you know, but for me, it's always been confidence and self-love and believing in yourself. And so these are the, that portion of my training is something I have spent 
a lot of time. Like I have a hypnotherapist. His name's Richard Hart. Like we work together in camp, out of camp. Um, and then just doing the work within myself as well, like holding myself accountable, like, you know, on the mats, off the mats, like, what are you doing? Like, it's easy to be like, well, this person's not doing this for me, which is why I'm losing. But it's like, no, you're showing up and you're not really here mentally. You're just going through the motions. Like, you know, take something from every day, like, find it and like find the love in it again you know and um so for me that was kind of it is when i realized okay it starts way outside of the cage like loving myself believing in mm. myself um you know knowing i'm worthy of love i'm worthy of great things because there was a moment in the arlene fight where i was like i don't deserve to be here like with this group of women, like I'm not good enough, you know? And so like fixing all of that. And I really felt that at PFL, it was like, man, like there would have been a moment where all this was so big for me. And like, now it's like, not only am I here, but I'm one of them. And now after Friday, I'm the, the I'm leading that. Yeah. You top know? Dog. So, so it really does just help me, um, you know, really stand behind the moves I've been making mentally, emotionally, and just keep this momentum going, you know, keep fixing myself every day as a person outside of the cage. So when it comes to those hard times where like believing in yourself, um, like Sam Hagen said it in his last fight, like you're going to get to a point where you meet somebody at the same skill. And it literally comes down to who believes in themselves right. more, who wants it more, and who's willing to go that extra mile. And that's the thing that I've been trying to tap into for every fight, you know? Yeah. So when if somebody does beat me again and kills my streak, streak it will purely be, be because they were better than me that night. It will not be anything that I have done because I know I'm going in there and I'm prepared to die. I'm ready for war at all times. And I think that's really helped with my confidence. Whereas before, you know, you kind of go into fight, you're like, God, I really hope this ends early. Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to get back. Even with this fight, I was like, man, you know, a six points would be great, you know, with the the, the format of it. Well, it teases you a little both. bit, right? <laughs> yeah, but me and her both, like I kept praying for me and her both, like, let's please just walk out of this fight healthy enough to like hit this second fight because mm -hmm. there's an automatic second fight. And I believe like everyone deserves the opportunity, you know, like, yeah, I'll punch you in the face, but like you still want like their career to like right. blossom um so i just in my head this whole time i was like all right them six points is cool they're there but the the the, the longevity the war the like what this could be at its peak of a fight is what was in my head and i think that that's super important mentally as well mental it's such a mental yeah thing. totally <laughs> i mean got to be able to function to to drive the vehicle a little bit right so <laughs> yeah. yeah and it and like it's really not even sometimes who's the most better like technical. It's like who who really believes it? Like, you can not know anything and go in there and believe in yourself so much and just <laughs> land that out. shot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's a crazy sport. That's why that's why we love it. But I mean, the plan obviously, Amber. You know, continue the momentum for as long as we can. Right, just keep it going and going. But I I, I got to wonder. It's always fascinating to me with you know certain fighters in this situation and being in the PFL tournament like. Is it tempting to just ride off into the sunset with a with a potential win at the end of the season and you know winning the championship and the million dollars like obviously you probably can't think about that but does it sound tempting? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I mean like to stop after that? Yeah. No. No way. No way. One you can never stop trying to win right. a million dollars. Yeah. Like, you just <laughs> Like I could win one million dollars, and they're like, "Hey, you want to try to win another million? I absolutely okay. want to try to win." <laughs> you're you're asking What's me. What's better than one million? What's better than one, two million? <laughs> but I think I think for me, it's just been really important to just like like for my for the division itself to just like give exciting fights so money or whatever like uh it, that's all beautiful of course we fight for money like you know we want to make a living off of this but i just want to have some really good performances until the end of my time like i won't be fighting forever and i'm mm. not at the beginning of my career not saying i'm at the end right. but i'm definitely not at the beginning you know so i just want to fight for as long as my body can can 
withstand it. And if I could win the belt, defend the belt, defend the belt, defend the belt, and make some ka off of it, like, I'm with it, you know? I've said this before, like, I really do think I could be a face, a featherweight face in PFL, and if I can stick around for a while, I'd like that. Yeah, I mean, can't beat it. So, like, I'm curious, what did you make of the other performances, though, from uh, from everybody else? I think, obviously... I mean, you're the leader, so you had the best one, undeniably. But uh, just what did you make of kind of, you know, Pacheco Bud was a close one. People thought maybe Julia could have won it. I thought Marina's win was a little premature in terms of the stoppage. But I don't know. What did you make of uh, everyone else who won? Um, I didn't. The the very first and second fight, like, I was kind of watching, but I kind of wasn't because I was, like, getting ready yeah. to, like, go out. Um, but... I, I did watch the second fight. It was Evelyn, Evelyn, and um, so back the, the girl. So yeah, from Poland, which was a good banger. That was a good fight. That was like back and forth, you mm. know. And it's like really cool to watch these women fight because I was in the back with some of them. Yeah. So like you watch the emotion, like you watch the emotion from like the whole week. So um, that fight was really entertaining, and I think that I was really excited to watch all the fights. I think all the women came out and like really did their thing, and watching them all week, seeing some of them cut weight, watching them still, make, you know what I mean? Like it was just like super dope experience. Um, I think Larissa is just, she's just feisty, yeah. you know, like if you want to stop Larissa, like you got to like really stop Larissa because whether she's on her back or whatever, like I love Larissa Pacheco. I am a fan. <laughs> I am Always a working. Fan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think that was a great fight though. I really do think that was a great fight. I thought that they counted Julie, but way out though. Oh, hundred percent. Like way out. Like some of the odds and they were stuff crazy. like that. And I was like, I was like, okay, like, you know, like, of course, like, Larissa is, has earned her right as the mm -hmm. queen, but Julie Buzz is a vet. She's a pioneer. Yeah. She's been here for, um, for years doing this. Like, put some respect on her name, too. Um, but, yeah, and then I like the Aspen-Alina fight. You know, Alina's strong. She's like an ox, that one. Um, so that was fun to watch. But I, I just... Yeah, I thought they were all really, really good. The first one, I didn't really see much of it. I mm -hmm. think that's the one that you said was the early stoppage, but mm -hmm. I didn't really see much of that one. But, yeah, it's going to be fun to enter the cage with some of these ladies, you know, yeah. especially after, like, you, know, you almost start to get to know each other a little bit. Because I'm not, like, a dickhead fighter. Like, I'll say hi to you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you know, me and Evelyn, we're chopping it up. Like, even though, like, we will fight one day, like, I just think life's too short to be walking around all, like, grumpy and like right. you know, being rude bad people, energy and, like bad energy like enjoy it you know and because one day this will all be a memory and like you know for me some of the younger fighters will still go on when i'm done and i'll be sitting on my couch watching them like oh i remember when we you know so yeah i just think all that extra energy is just unnecessary yeah, yeah. and the more grumpy and the more grumpy people are is like the nicer i get too <laughs> which so, pisses them like, off even more <laughs> yeah it's like don't come over here with all that grumpy energy bro because i'm just gonna get like you want a cookie you want to get you something like, what's up? <laughs> but yeah no, it's cool man pfl's are like obviously i've worked with so many different organizations like in my career and uh, pfl is amazing their staff's amazing they're super helpful like the show the all of it like it was like you're almost like a superstar even if it's just for like your brief little moment you know it's cool yeah no they're they definitely doing things very very neatly over there and i've been to plenty of the events myself at this point, but uh, it's it's kind of interesting, and I'm glad to hear you talk about the friendliness, though, Amber, because obviously some people aren't all like that, but it brings me back to the first event I ever covered was actually, I was at the Arlene fight, and you guys obviously had a pretty intense stare down, like, that, yeah, wasn't, that, was that wasn't a personal thing between you guys, was it, or? No, that was, no, that was fake confidence, Amber, okay. you know, that was like... <laughs> That was like that was like Amber who really didn't believe in herself or her skills, so she was just trying to like you know okay. like interrogate somebody, right? Which is also like that that stare down itself was also something that made me switch my mentality to like, is that how you want to be represented? Like mm. a dickhead? Like is that is that what you want people to think of you? Like I could still like get close to you. Like me and Mar Martrina had like a little bit of an intense like you know, but yeah. it wasn't nothing like 
you know, it just is what it is. Like we're exchanging energy, but I didn't have to be so, especially with someone like Arlene Blenkow, who's like a vet, like deserves nothing but respect and all that stuff. So that was a lot of my own insecurities being shown. And like, that was also like part of that, that little like experience of things that helped shape me to who I am of like finding confidence, really believing in yourself, like, you know, not just being cocky, but like being sure, you know, and all that, all that confidence comes from training. Mm. Like all, I mean, of course, not all of it, but like mostly like the confidence, like you should be so sure in what you just did in your camp that nothing else matters, which is where my accountability came in because I wasn't doing everything I was supposed to be doing in camp. And I knew that, you know, so you try to make up for it in other ways. But yeah, so no, nothing ever personal with me and Arlene. Love Arlene to death, you know, definitely a fight. Like, I mean, I don't know, you know, if it will ever happen, but definitely a fight. Like, I would love to fight her again when I was was at more of like mentally, like at a better place. You know, I think it'd be much, much better fight i mean it was still a great fight Mm -hmm. but you know what i mean um but yeah like those experiences was just like dang amber do you want to be like known as a bitch like that's what you want (laughs) that's what you want because i mean i am a grumpy and like i'm not like you know like i am like i'm a harder person to Mm -hmm. deal with like i don't just accept new people right away like you kind of like i gotta like know you a little bit you know like you know but at the same time like i've learned to like you can still have like your reservations but you don't have to be like an asshole right you don't have to be like mean and like acting like your shit don't stink and like you're better than it because you're not and fighting will expose that real quick and then the whole world is going to be like haha remember when you acted like a dick and then you got knocked out yeah you Uh, you won't let me forget it (laughs) yeah like oh yeah yeah, thank you. It's like it's like the meme of me and Arlene forehead to forehead, then like the picture of her power slamming me, and it's like, yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks guys. You can always <laughs> trust on the internet. Uh, yeah, the internet never fails. Like who wins? The internet every time. Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, Amber, like. Speaking of Australians, I think we can probably agree we have the same favorite Aussie uh, and Miss Jessie Jess. And uh, I just want to ask you about your friendship specifically with her because you're closer to her than I am, but I consider her a friend as well. Uh, what, just how important is it for you to have like a good friend and support system and somebody who's also a fighter and just, you know, a great fun personality like someone of Jessie's caliber? <laughs> It's everything, you know, like she really is my sister. I love her from the bottom of my heart. Um, She's taught me so much about myself, about uh, being a person, about like friendship, you know, all these things that like, you know, she's part of the reason why I've I've kind of switched the way I am. Like it fights, like, you know, being nice and, and presentable and like all these things. So she's taught me like business end of things, you know, you know, and then she's also taught me so many personal things with just like her and I and like you know with our own like life bullshit and things like that so it is extremely comforting and it's extremely like wow like it feels good to know like someone's got your back like no matter where no matter what no matter, I don't care what room we're in and this is for each other like I know damn well like she's got my back and like she knows damn well I got her back and it is a really good feeling um for both of us especially like fight time like we don't really train a lot together like we don't spar together you know like um and but we are in each other's corners because Mm -hmm. it's just that energy that you know what i mean like that's that that's one of the people i want to see when i win you know Mm -hmm. like she was like literally like i look at her and she's crying i'm crying (laughs) you know it's so special to us and i think to have it's important to have at least one friend like that and yeah my favorite Aussie. That's of course. For sure. <laughs> Everybody's. Uh, did you guys yeah. connect like right away when you met? Do you remember what it was like? Yeah. No? I, don't know. <laughs> like, I had no idea who she was. I mean, that's not true. So I met Jesse <laughs> my first pro fight ever. You know? oh, okay. But I didn't really know anything more than that interaction we had then like you know i kind of knew she was a fighter but i didn't really know her and then when she moved to california and started training at cfa i still didn't know her and i'm like what is this chick <laughs> like she'll be here you know like whatever like i'm not really gonna get to know her just yet you yeah know? yeah she was kind of going back and forth and from cali to vegas and stuff and then covid hit and then when covid mm. hit 
we were like, you know, we definitely just started to kind of like hit it off and like, you know, get to know each other a little bit, be more friends, realize that we're both funny as fuck, you know, that we're both the funniest people either one knows. And, and we're also kind of cunty sometimes too. So it's like <laughs> me and her, so you ever seen the Muppets? Oh yeah. And you know, the two old people. Yes. In yes. The band? So that's me and Jesse, like. <laughs> okay. The hands down, that's <laughs> us. Like, that's our next Halloween costume. Oh, but, that's brilliant. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it took us both like a little bit of a minute to like really like connect like the way we are. And um, we've only gotten so close because we are like we're for real with each other, you know. And so like I think being able to have tough conversations with somebody about each other, the other person, work, whatever, but being able to have tough conversations with somebody and then work through them and work past them, like just naturally will build like such a bond. And yeah, that's my bitch. I love her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> love to hear it. And you know, very excited for her fight coming up too. So that'll be a good yeah. Good and I'll be out there. Yeah, for sure. So. With my dance moves in the cage. Again, exactly. But for her. <laughs> yeah. <you know. laughs> Sending that energy. So. <laughs> All right, Amber. Well, taking plenty of your time, and I appreciate it oh so much. But uh, before before I let you go, I want to ask you the toughest question that uh, seems I ask fighters, which is, uh, if you never got into MMA, what is the one thing you think you'd be doing instead? <sighs> If yeah. I never got into MMA, Common reaction. I <laughs> what, what I would have wanted to do is I probably would work in like like the the youth system with like like broken like youth or troubled youth or like abused like kids and mm -hmm. women and stuff like that. Um, but that's a hard question because you know I was a big like partier before fighting and then fighting stopped my partying. Right. So I want to say I would do you know, something, you know, helpful, yeah. <laughs> but the way it was looking, I probably would have ended up partying on a yacht somewhere. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. But yeah, no, I, I've always wanted to, and, you know, it could even still be something yeah. I do, like, down the line but um i've always wanted to help like you know kids and women and like you know just kind of people that grew up the way i did so that's yeah. probably it all right yeah well it's funny because like you know you don't have to think about that in the exact moment because the MA thing's going pretty well, but it's always a fun thing I like to ask about. Yeah, so. always, um, oh, and then I am going to learn how to tattoo. Too. Oh, that is, all right. That is going to be the next adventure for sure. So. Oh, well, I actually wanted to ask you about like the leg tattoo that you have because the color's crazy on that. I was curious, like how long did that one take? Uh, so I got this one done by my friend named Sean Riviera over at Legacy Inc. And, um, that one, we did. We hit this one with a couple sessions. Yeah. But he, he did real well. He impact. He packed this color in really, really well. And then this one right here is done by my boy OC over at Rich and Flesh. And so OC is gonna hit my whole arm. Oh, okay. um, and he's out in Livermore. So, yeah, we're probably gonna keep this one black and white, and then finish up the leg some color. But thank you. Yeah. yeah. Good this stuff. One, this, this one was painful but so i'm glad everyone likes it so much yeah. <laughs> i mean this this hurts too but this yeah. knee part hurt. yeah i'm sure it was funny because i i showed my mom uh your knockout and she saw it right away and she's like is she bleeding like is her knee bleeding i was like no mom, it's just a, it's a very vibrant colors <laughs> yeah, no, oh man i'm glad it looked so vibrant yeah. still but yeah it was a nice little picture i was like oh look at that phoenix it's long <laughs> yeah <laughs> Good stuff. Well, all right, Amber, I'll let you get on with the rest of your day. And uh, again, I appreciate it oh so much. Big congratulations on being the leader. Hopefully we can continue to get another six and just ride it all the way to the top. I'll be watching. So thanks so much for chatting. I'll see you guys in Atlanta.